Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Seven and Laces Comic Stash. And we are digging our hands through the utter quagmire of bullocks and shit that is... The, the filth and muck that's at the bottom of that barrel, isn't it? It is, it is really dragging our hands around the utter gush that is the worst in films in comic book land. And we are picking our top five worst films. We, um, For anyone who watches this in any of our other ventures, especially the Renaissance men, I think you'll be very used to me like being very negative and, and hating everything. And I think when they probably watch me on here, we're a lot more, I don't want to say lighter, we're still ourselves, but I think we're playing in worlds more often than not that we like. Aren't yeah. we? So I think there's a lot more positivity here than there. Um, but I kind of had hit a breaking point. We've been too positive for too long and it's time to get down and dirty, kids. It's, it's down to, I don't know, work out some of those inner demons that we've got about uh, some of the worst stuff that's out there. And unfortunately, I think um, the truth of it is, is that movies are the worst pick for this. Don't get me wrong. There's some terrible comic books out there, but I think weighted wise, it's a lot more even, whereas I think in the movie universe, oh, there's some horror shows and uh, we'll get into what they are and why they're horror shows as we go on. Because I think there's different criteria as well in our heads as to what has made something hit a, a worse movie. And it's not just that they're bad. There's, there's yeah. other wrinkles that make, make it even more egregiously bad than just bad writers, bad directors and bad actors. Yes. But before we... Uh start trolling our way through the immense amount of shit. Let's have something positive and go to our happy place, our reading corners. In my reading corner this week, again, thanks very much to, I keep wanting to say Kindle Unlimited as if it's a, a mysterious benefactor, but eventually if I forget to cancel it, I am going to have to start paying. But at the moment, um, free delivery of it, uh, I, I, I've played around again in a very happy and nice home for me. I downloaded, and it is the complete collection, and it is from the Marvel Knights run. So this is when Marvel um, allowed non-Marvel contracted people to have some of their characters, Daredevil being one of them, the, a Punisher being another. We'll never do the Punisher one, by the way. It's awful. Um, but they also let um, the Marvel Knights brand let's say have black panther and black panther is a character that i'd seen sporadically in the avengers but never really had much to do with and and there's a run by uh christopher priest and i think it's fair to say that this comic book never sold well um it was on the verge of being cancelled multiple times but the people who loved it loved it and goddamn i was one of those people and um i think it's just an amazing run of comic books now i am i'm, I'm gonna flit out of this very quickly because i have only caught up with the first three issues of it but already it's reminded me why i love it so much and i think probably for the next reading corner i will be banging through the rest of this and i'll probably go a little bit more in depth but oh it, it it's a it's just smart funny superhero telling that meant a lot to me at the time because i think it really was when i was tiptoeing into i want more than just the good guy punches the bad guy um and this scratched an itch at the perfect time for me. Nice. And something that I will force feed down your throat at some point in uh, in 52 years' time <laughs> when uh, we've got through some of this backlog. <laughs> There's only one or two things we've got, you know, on the list. Yeah. And how about yourself? <laughs> what have you been up to in your reading corner? So I have hit some more freebies. So I have read Ms. Marvel Infinite, number one. Oh, cool, um, yeah. Which... I liked the the book and how it was and the what it was saying. What I didn't like was how it was done on comicsology. Um, oh, okay. It's one of the comicsology ones because yeah. it pops up the panels each time. And yeah, it was specifically designed, wasn't it, to interact with the software? And uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm with you. I've found these. Odd. I don't. I didn't find it added to the experience. I found it detracting no. from the experience. Yeah, it was like 
I was like, ooh, but I'm not sure I like how this is done with these ones. Um, I'm not sure if it if it's the infinite brand and it was just done as a digital they are digitally only type stories and that's how they it was yeah. a, a play in the field. But yeah, wasn't wasn't a fan of the way it was delivered, but I I liked what I read. The uh, the is the um I want to say it's Adrian Al I think it's Adrian Alphone is the artist on it and G Willow Wilson is the writer and they do a lot of the early Miss Marvel stuff. So you have got the, the, the right team or the right creative team on it to, to do something good. Yeah. But um but yeah, I I didn't enjoy my infinite experience. And um I, I think in good news now there's uh, quite a few bits out there that are called Comicsology Originals, which is them really trying to, I guess, do what Netflix does, which is have um some stuff that is procured and, and created for it, but it doesn't lean so heavily into this sort of stuff. But I guess this is the early days and they're trying out the bells and whistles. You know, we've said before, how do you bring comics to a modern audience? And I think maybe they felt that this was a more interactive way of doing it, but no, I'm with you. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Functionality wise. Yeah. The next one. Oh my, this was a fucking crock of shit. I thought we were being positive, Chris. Lou Fregno's liberator. Zero. Do you know what? I, I've, I've never even heard of it. But um, when you said Lou Fregno's Liberator, I, I went, mm, I can kind of see probably why this wasn't going to be a banger. <laughs> so this is a tie-in to a 20-minute short film and is five pages of you just seeing Lou Fregno as this guy about to go on a chat show. And then the rest of it's just promo pictures from the film. It was a waste of time. <laughs> it was like it it does not make me want to go and pay money for any more of them. This was I just I was gonna look it up. And this is this is what uh, makes me think that the freebie crap oh, there'll, there'll be some dross when does there, not well. work yeah. when they do it like this. Well, imagine again, I guess for you who's just experienced this and said how bad it is, I like imagine if this is your first one. And you went, well, I'm never yeah. reading another comic book ever again. Um, funnily enough, I went on to, uh, not one that I'd heard of and not one that I'd read, but I went on to um, uh, Amazon to uh, see it just so I could kind of see the cover. And uh, I found the, <laughs> I found it, let's say. But before I found it, I also found that there were three bands out there with uh, uh, singles called Lou Frigno. So I'm interested in that more than I am the comic book. <laughs> As you've just described it, um, in bad news, there seems to be um, a uh, issue two of it that that costs two pound twenty eight. I'm guessing that you're not uh, going to come back to to get more. Um, but no, this was issue zero. So oh god, so there's an issue there's one a... that probably costs as well. Oh god, yeah, which yeah, that that's not going to be revisited. Um, well, there you the go. One... I mean, it's so rare, though, isn't it? That like, because I think generally everything we've been doing, we've been saying, um, "Yeah, this is good. This is good. It's nice to kind of have a strong avoid to offer out there. Don't, don't, yeah. uh, don't crack onto this." Uh, the next one was one that I just looked at because I was like, "Oh, it's free. I'll have a look." Was DC Superheroes Girls number one? Oh, I don't think I know this, this one either. Is basically sort of young girl versions of the DC female roster. So you've got Batgirl, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, um, Wonder Woman in there. And it's not for me. I am not the audience for this. This is very much for kids. But it's not bad. It was fun. It was about dinosaurs. And if I had a six, seven-year-old girl, I would quite happily hand that to them and go, there's your entry point. I said to you recently, didn't I? I was reading, rereading the Tiny Titans, which I think skews to a, a very young audience. And I, I, I didn't really feel like it skewed to boys more than girls or vice versa, but I don't know. But yeah, I've just had a quick look at it. And uh, certainly the art style looks like a kind of uh, a cross between... Uh, Western Saturday morning cartoon and um, anime, doesn't it? And I think, yeah, um, yeah I, I think this would skew 
very much from a visual standpoint, yeah, towards uh, young girls. And yeah, as we said, like a lot of this is about finding ways to bring a new audience in. And yeah, it you know, looks like it would be a relatively good product from that point of view. Yes, it is. It's one of those, like as I said, the story was good. You know, they a time traveling bus on a field trip, go back to the prehistoric work days, a uh, dinosaur attacks the bus, breaks it in half, and they've got to, you know, get out of the trouble they're in. The story was, as I said, good story, well done. It's just, we, I'm not the target audience. You know, yeah. it said, it's good for what it is. Will I go back and read more? No. But as I said, if I had a girl and didn't have, you know, a boy, I would Ooh. very much well, be like, to read this. But one of the nice things is that, like, um, like now that you know it exists, like, if in sort of casual conversation along the way with someone you work with or someone you meet in the pub or, like, even, like, through through Will of, of, of kind of going, oh, is there anything you'd recommend for if, I'm, like, if you've got a young sort of, like, less than 10-year-old girl who, who you might want to introduce to it, then you've now got someone in your locker to say, yeah, give this a go. And there's a free issue of it on Prime Reading. Yeah. And last but not least is The Behemoth has been cracked. Bloody hell. I have started Nightfall 2. My eternal guilt is kicking in. My shame. As we do need to... Uh, Coming soon. That one. Coming we... soon, Nightfall episode 2. Yeah. yeah. Not that we've been holding back to not do it and be like, can we have some you know fun stuff first? But yeah. Well, the thing is, I think, I think like, uh, I mean, it's one of... Obviously, we took it on early doors. It was one of the first things we talked about doing, and I think because it was a big book and the way we did it, you know, we really did go in depth. And we do have intent to to have these chunkier in depth ones. But I think um, because of the size of it, and, and maybe because of where it ended, um, we wanted to do some varied episodes before we got back to it. You know, like almost make these more a bit more sort of tempo. Um, I know over Christmas, obviously, we did um, some specials, which were smaller stories, but of a similar kind of um, idea. But yeah, Nightfall, we are doing Nightfall 2, and then we are doing Nightfall 3. Three. Yes. I'm trying we to remember will. even what the kind of uh, monikers are for it as it goes forward. But yeah, yeah, we are, we are going through the whole kit and caboodle, and we, and we will get there. But yeah, we just wanted a little break between the two. Um, and then, as we say, we always read this stuff um as close to the show as we can to kind of um i don't know to to get that thoughts and feelings in our head and it doesn't mean we're going to remember everything exactly god the amount of times you know we have to google stuff on here but yeah. i think certainly so the, the 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 flavors and the feelings we had from it are fresh in our minds rather than going oh yeah i remember i'm sure i remember 10 years ago i liked that um but but yeah, yeah. it's nightfall too coming soon uh when we've both read it when, when we've got through all 650 pages. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, like, uh, for people who read 650-page uh, books, like, it's going out of fashion. I think part of it is is that it's not even so much the length of it, but it is a lot of one single story in one go and a lot for us to kind of take on board and work through how we're going to uh, going to do it. But, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, I won't ask you what you think about it so far. Because that's <laughs> a four-hour podcast somewhere down the line. That is. Yeah. But what we will do is go into shit films. And shit films. As we both know, said, how many times was your list of top five, or worst five, actually a list of 25? I think every time I say this about every top five, I go, oh, this one was the hardest one. This one was really hard. Because there is some awful movies out there. Um, and um, I, I think I found it quite hard to narrow it down to five. Um, and I think we, within that five, I think I found it kind of hard to narrow down ranking. But um, I, I think I've I think I've think got there. Um, a few have changed from like three and four and two and three and stuff like that. But um, well, one and five have been pretty solid for, for a little while now. But, but yeah, I, I guess when we actually get into them, we'll talk about why they make our top five. And I think that that will allow us maybe to speak a little bit more to how how and why we might have found it difficult. Because there's so many criteria that can make a film bad. Um, yes. And, and superhero ones seem to lean into all of them um, along the way. So some honourable mentions. 
I will get mine out of the way first. The, there are two here that may have ended up on the list if I'd have ever actually watched the whole thing. That tells you what I think of both of these. Okay. It is the 1990 Captain America film and the 1990s Nick Fury film. That, yeah. Both of which got turned off halfway through. Yeah. So I've never seen them all the way through. They may have some sort of amazing comeback second part to them, but I'm not going to imagine they were I, I both say... dollars far. I can say no. I can I'm quite happily tell you that you made a good, solid decision. Um, uh, honorable mentions uh, for me, and, and my God, there are so many. But the ones that oh, like, I have I, more. Oh, sorry, sorry. I have more. The, these two were the ones that could have got you know higher if oh. I'd have actually finished seeing them. Yeah. But others on my list: Catwoman. Fuck you, Halle Berry. You are shit. And everything about that film is I think shit. you'll find that's a fuck you Oscar winning actress, Halle Berry. <laughs> <laughs> the Crow, City of Angels. Fuck you. You are awful. I, I, and then led into the awful TV series. Yeah. But in my research for finding other films, I have found out that there have been two more Crow films made. One of which in 2005 with David Baderes. And Tara Reid in. Whoa. My sick, per- my sick thing wants to actually see it to see how fucking awful that is. I'm uh, just going to uh, get up an app now to see if it's on streaming anywhere. So you carry on with your honorable <laughs> mentions while I try and find out whether this shit show is available to us. There's an episode. Um, X Men 3, Last Stand, just being utter bollocks and how they fucked. The, the Phoenix story and seeing that they put in shit tons of extra X-Men where was Gambit? Fuck you. One that is, it could be classed as so bad it's good but it's not really. The Return of the Incredible Hulk also known as Hulk versus Four. Going that, back to that... Fregno. That one, um, I will say, I'm going to put a confession in here. That one is so bad, it's good in my book. That that one would, would got nowhere near my top five because I I fondly remember it, but fondly remember it in a sick pervert kind of way of going, this is terrible, but I could watch it over and over again for hilarity. And the last two on my honourable mentions list, Punisher, 89, Dolph mm-hmm. Lundgren, mm-hmm. and Punisher 2004. With John Travolta. Both. Utter gush. And terrible portrayals of a fucking awesome character. I know there's a third one. Like War Games, I think it's called. But I've not watched it. War because... Games! <laughs> because let's face it, we're already 2-0 and o for terribleness. Do I really want the hat trick? And... Um... Marvel-wise, um, some of the ones you mentioned there, like the Cat one, the Nick Fury one, um, uh, Roger Corman's Fantastic Four, although that's got a very kind of potted history of as to why it's bad rather than necessarily um, uh, they, they, they intended to make something good and it turned out bad. Um, Lundgren's Punisher. Um, and, and to an extent, uh, Stallone's Judge Dredd. Uh, fits into kind of this cr- category for me, and probably Crow City of Angels is that um, that, that uh, they didn't make my consideration even for the top five, so wouldn't get my honorable mentions just because I feel like they were always destined to fail. Now that doesn't make them not bad, don't get me wrong, but um, but yeah, I, I just I always feel sorry for them as an idea and as a concept, and they were kind of thrown out there to die. Um, people were just buying licenses for fun rather than for any kind of real um, concept behind it. But honourable mentions for me, Catwoman's in my honourable mentions as well. Um, it's a terrible movie. Um, I think and, and my honourable mentions are all ones that I did legitimately consider for the top five at a certain point. Um, Catwoman's just terrible. I think it's just a terrible movie. And And actually, one of the things that I think saved it from being in here is that it bears no relation to Catwoman. No. So I almost kind of don't think of it as a 
as a superhero movie anymore because of that. Um, by the same token, Electra, um, almost the Marvel equivalent of Catwoman, where they just went, uh, we kind of fancy making an Electra movie. I think they gave it to someone who'd never read Electra and nor, neither wanted to and went, I've kind of got a rough script for a movie. I will use Jennifer Garner and we'll call it Electra because more people might come along. Um, then we get into the the wonderful, wonderful world of um, the Justice League. And uh, I, I cannot determine between Whedon nor um, Snyder's version because they're both a fucking abomination. And I feel like they should be on my top five worst movies, but I didn't want to give them credit of making a top five anything. Um, and <laughs> by the same token, um, um, Birds of Prey um, or whatever the bloody hell the long title for that movie is, the emancipation of Harley Quinn and the blah, 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 blah. Um, a, a cuddling itself as it, as it goes into the fiery depths of hell, cuddling and holding on to Suicide Squad at the same time and taking that with it because um, these are just really bad movies and really bad movies with a budget. I think in another universe that have made this list, they did not make this list because... Um, I think there are worse examples of what these movies do um, or or don't do well. And my, my, my last one, and this is the one that was so close, so close to making the list, in fact, was on there in many iterations, is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, I, I cannot... I almost, and I still haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, one of the main reasons why I struggle with the idea of going to see Spider-Man No Way Home is the idea of having to see um, electro Jamie Fox style on my screen ever again. Um, so bad that it made me physically shake with anger in the cinema as I was watching it. And a movie, a character that I'd grown to like, I actually quite liked Amazing Spider-Man. I liked Garfield. I liked Emma Stone in it. I When it got to Amazing Spider-Man 2, I went, okay, I'm in. I think they're building a spider universe that I'm at least happy with. And then that come out and, oh, hated it, hated it. But, yes, those were very, very, very close to, to making the list. So we will go into our top fives. And I'll start. Yeah. And I'm bringing to the table of shitness national treasure Tom Holland Fucking murdering Venom. This film is just utter garbage. It's boring. It goes nowhere. It doesn't hold Venom up as he should be. They try and play it for laughs, but there are none. It is just fucking dross. Have you seen the second? No, 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 for I. Um, because after that first one, I don't want to. I, I share, I share some of your feelings. Maybe not quite the level of vitriol you have for it, um, but certainly in the boring front. I mean, this movie is boring, isn't it? And I love Tom Hardy. The man's a like an acting beast in my book. And I went when I saw the cast, I thought, wow, this is really kind of interesting casting here. And um, maybe they're going to do. I mean, I love like Bronson where he plays like the, the, the gangster killer Bronson. And uh, yeah. it's just an amazing, and again, of course, directors and writers have something to do with this. But I thought, God, are they really going to let like uh, Tom Hardy unleash like he's in himself? And instead, no, they just seem to write the most blandest, boring this story ever. And I, do you know why it didn't even make my honourable mentions? I feel sorry for it. I feel sorry <laughs> for it in the way of, They'd bought the license. Obviously, they had the Spider-Man universe license as a company. And I think, you know, they've handled it semi, semi well, quite well with the Spider-Man movies. But I think they were going, oh, we need to cash in, we need to cash in. And I think fundamentally, what makes this so off-putting for me, and again, why it keeps out of the list, is that they don't tie into Spider-Man at all. So you get this ridiculous thing of going, he's got no links to Spider-Man like he does in the comics. So why yeah. the fuck is he dressed like a like an evil version of Spider-Man? It makes no sense. And 
Uh, yeah, I, I almost pity this more than hate it, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you. It's really bad. It is really <laughs> bad. And, and it's really boring. It, I, I think yeah. that's its most egregious thing of going, you've taken a character that in pretty much every format um, people have ever put it in before is... Uh, it's awesome. is, is awesome, yeah, and you've made him so bland, um, yeah, and and a great cast. What a shame as well, because I, I felt like the actors were there going, "Oh God, if only we'd have read the script before we signed the contract." Is what I felt like <laughs> um, they were doing. But yeah, a so grand a is... grand pick. But yeah, I I just couldn't I, I couldn't you, quite you, put it in. You mind. couldn't give it a kicking because it's already had enough. It's, yeah, yeah, it was too boring to make a top five. <laughs> I guess was probably the truth of it. Um, so what is your number five? It's a number five for me. And, and I think I think it might not make some people top fives because I think going back to what we said earlier about um, the, the Hulk movie, that it could be so bad it's good. Um, I think some people might have a little bit of a kind of cult affection for this. But uh, no, number five for me is uh, Superman for the quest for peace. Um, I... I <laughs> We said before, I'm not a big Superman fan in general, but I actually do quite like Superman 1 and 2. I have some big faults with it, and and I begrudgingly like Superman 3. Um, but but that's the one where I kind of go, this is so corny, it, it's good. Um, and then you hit Superman 4, which um, is done on a, a shoestring budget. I mean, God, if you watch this movie, like, they don't even bother to hide the fact that they're using the same flying scene over and over and over and over again to save budget. So from that side, there's kind of no rescuing it. But all of the charm that Donna built up in that universe, and it really was one that I think kind of spoke more to the 30s, 40s, 50s um, of, of, of Superman in those original movies and, and, and Reeve himself, all of that's disappeared. And I, th I think in their head they were going to tell this really meaty story about um, nuclear disarmament and how yeah. the world should be better and Superman's place in it. And instead, they create the shittest villain ever. I mean, God, how did this guy ever, one, be created, and two, the actor who plays him is atrocious. They create Nuclear Man, who um, effectively takes out Superman by scratching his neck. Um, yeah. It is, It is the pits. It is... And I think again, why it makes my list, and this is this is stuff we're going to get as we go through this, is um, this killed a franchise. This killed a franchise that was doing still well enough. Superman three yeah. had done well enough, and I know there are again bits around the story where another company with less money bought it out. But this is when comic book characters done badly could have a really negative effect. There was a big gap before we saw someone have a crack at another major motion picture. You know, we're going to Burton coming in to do Batman after this because this almost killed superhero movies because people saw yeah. this. It is shit. It is terrible. And it almost destroyed a genre of movie. Yeah. It, it is not good. I've watched it once and when I never need to see this again. I that, wish I was you. Good. I wish I'd only ever seen it once, but I've, I've unfortunately <laughs> tried it a few times now and uh, it doesn't get any better. So we have some listener picks. Yeah. So one of them from my buddy, Pete Kimber, from the Wrestling 20 Years Ago podcast. He's gone Green Lantern, Silver Surfer, Ghost Rider, Venom, and then Catwoman. Well, but in no I mean... particular order. There's uh there's one of your top five uh, top five in there and one that made both of our honourable mentions so um so you know again we're we're not too far off kilter with our audience that's a good sign no so number four for me the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer this for two reasons one it's just utter shit. <laughs> And two, what the fuck did they do to the Silver Surfer? Yeah. Why did they rape him so hard? If you've ever watched that episode of South Park where um, Spielberg's raping Indiana Jones, this was Marvel raping Silver Surfer. This, noticeably, this was... though, noticeably, again, it's, uh, it's one of their franchises that was 
outside of their control. You know, they they sold it off to um, is this I can't remember is this Fox, Fox or I can't yeah, yeah this um, is part of the X Men deal yeah you, you kind of go um, this is the danger of licensing your products out to other people and letting them do what they will with it and sometimes they do things like this um, yeah even even the joy of Jessica Alba in skin tight suits does not work for this film. Well, not, not, not to do a bit of a spoiler, but we, we may have a bit more about Jessica Alba coming up later. <laughs> but yeah, this is fucking gash. Yeah, it is terrible. It is terrible. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, the first one's bad as well, isn't it? Like to be let's fair, be honest, it, it, I, I, you could have put these both either of these two in. I haven't seen the redo that they I, I did think, i think the, re later, but the, the redo would potentially make it into a lot of people's top five words because i think actually on paper as disgusting as this is going to sound that potentially the, the the last one the redo is probably the worst movie of them all um but where it wouldn't make my list over this is that um they don't fuck up so many good stories that have come before and actually, yeah. it's quite clear and it's quite renowned that the director probably had a OK at best movie there, but no, sorry, an OK movie at least. And the studio got really involved. And yeah. there's even stuff that's in the trailer that doesn't make it into the film because the studio just go, no, we're not paying for that. So, you know, things like that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, as much as that's probably more of a car crash, that feels like a studio director conflict car crash rather than... Um, it just being, being just, just being shit. turd, yeah. <laughs> so, what makes your number four? So, uh, you've mentioned uh, this one already, but it comes in at uh, number four for me is uh, X Men Three or X Men: The Last Stand, which, which, which uh, like, again, going back to what I said about Superman, probably should have and could have been the last stand of the X Men in movies, and possibly could have been and should have been. The last stand of superhero movies based on Marvel characters. Um, X Men One, you go back and watch it now. I think it shows its age. It creeps a bit. X Men Two, again, you know, like I think it has some real positives, um, but isn't as good as maybe remember it. But I think both of them pushed comic books into something that was viable for movies. And then X Men Three comes along. This film is garbage. Um, much like you were just saying then, uh, one of the big criteria it does on this is this takes one of the most iconic, renowned and loved stories in comic book history in the Phoenix Saga. And I've got, I, I still can't tell you, I can't, I've seen this movie a few times now, I can't tell you what happens with the Phoenix Saga in this movie because I just still don't understand it. I just don't get what they did. And like weird random stuff, and I think this is where movies are sometimes out of control, but like, you have Gene to killing Cyclops really early, but that's because there'd been a disagreement and he was pissed enough to go and uh, join the Superman universe. So that's why he wanted to be written out of it and things like that. You just go, well, just don't put him on camera. But um, from, from, a, from a, a cinematic building, so I think without the X-Men um, and without a few of these tentpole moments, we wouldn't be where we are now and, and, and probably even been able to do something like this and have people potentially watch because there'd, there'd have been, it's, it would have been much more a niche audience. It did so well only to do this on top of it. And this is, this is fucking garbage. Um, I, I, I actively hate it. I, I think it's, it's, you know, like I think it should be burnt out of existence. I don't think it should be acknowledged anymore, including later on in the Marvel or sorry, in the X-Men cinematic universe, them actually writing it out of existence by uh, doing a storyline which which effectively gets rid of it. Um, that's how bad this movie is. Yes. So next listener part entry is my boy Yelly, who has gone with Turtles Three. I don't think I've seen it, by the way. I don't think I've seen Turtles Three. So so um, I think that's the uh, one with Kevin Nash's Shredder. Thing. Oh God, I'm definitely in there. I'm finding this one as well. That's joining me. That's joining in Crow Three list of, of shit I need to watch. <laughs> um, Electra, Batman and Robin, Green Lantern, and one I've not heard of, but I had to look up to see what it was. Steel. Oh Shaq. yeah, yeah. Sha Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. Superhero. Um, I would say it's in. Shaq is in there with the kind of um, 
uh, Nick Fury and Captain America and, and Corman Fantastic Four range for me of going, they clearly had Shaq signed up for a movie deal. Um, they went, what should we put him in? We'll put him in um, a comic book franchise still. But it, other than that, it pretty much bears no relation to Steel as a concept in the comic books are either, <laughs> other than he wears a really bad metal suit in it. So, so yeah, I can see why it makes people's top spies, but it wouldn't make mine again because of that. It never had a chance. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it was a made for TV in another universe. And they, yeah, just, just fucking <laughs> pure garbage. But pod probably would be one of those ones where if you've had a few beers and you were some mates, you'd slam it on to laugh at it more than get angry at it. Yeah. So here is something that you would not put on to have a laugh. You would only get angry with. Is my number three? Mm -hmm. Eyes to see you. Okay. Batman and Robin. This killed a great moment of Batman being a big film thing for at least what, 10 years between that and Nolan coming back with yeah. Dark Knight? I, 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 um, I almost didn't go and watch Dark Knight because the taste of this was still in my mouth <laughs> 10 years later. You know, this is just shit. You've got bat nipples. You've got Alicia Silverstone uh, being shit. Is she is in most things. Chris O'Donnell is awful. I, if I have my clueless pops close by, I'll be uh, disputing <laughs> it. Right Clooney as Batman. I like Clooney, Fuck. but he's fucking terrible as Batman. And although, again, I say that I, I do not put any blame at Clooney's door for this. I, I feel like he probably, when he uh, took the role, I mean, one, it's Batman, so you go, I'm going to make money. But I'm sure in his head he was thinking, oh, yeah, you know, Keaton did a really impressive turn as this. I could do something with this and then was given the script and the director and went, oh, fucking hell. I just need to get through these two weeks as quickly as possibly I can. Poison Ivy is shit. And Uma Thurman's a good actress, but yeah. this is bad. Well, she needed Tarantino to be spitting on her to get something out of her in this role. <laughs> <I think. laughs> You've got, you know, you've got Bane as Luchador Bane, but mindless husk that does nothing. And the only redeeming feature in this film is Arnie as Mr. Freeze, pulling out the best Batman 66 references and one-line one puns that would have fit perfectly in that universe. But in this, is so out of place. It hurts. If you, right, take Adam West, Batman. Freeze means... shooting an ice ray at him. Eyes to meet you. Would be great. It would fit in with everything it was there. But it fucking doesn't work in this. And it's is... just like, oh. Is your dislike of it? And bearing in mind, it's number three. So you know, that's quite high, but there's still two higher than it. Is your uh, hatred of it tempered at all because uh, of how bad also Batman Forever was before it? So you'd almost been baby steps towards the see, fact that this was going wrong? See, I like Batman Forever, but I think it's because of how good... Tommy Lee and Jim Carrey are as Riddler and Two Face. That that film is carried by them. That I can get over Kilmer being a bit shit. Yeah. And my disdain for Chris O'Donnell as Robin. Yeah. Did he, did, did he do anything after this? Did, did he just disappear from Hollywood? Um, in shame. He turns up in CSI. I mean, oh, or, or NCIS or one of those sort of shows. Seems right. But Seems yeah. just. Yeah. But yeah, it is just that thing of like, there's just so, so many things that are wrong with this. And it, and the neon lights. Why is everything sort of black with neon? I, I think they had some sort of sponsorship deal with 
the neon shop down well, the day road. Glow. Yeah, day glow yeah. Thing. yeah. They were just like, fuck, we've got all this, we've got all this neon. And we probably had it for a different movie or something like that. It's probably something stupid like that, isn't it? Where you go, uh, okay, like we had this set set up, it cost us a few bob. Let's uh let's reuse it on, on the next movie we're gonna film. Oh Batman, yeah, okay, we'll stick it on that. Yeah, it is. Just don't do it, people. Just don't do it. I am um, in in a in a brief update, uh, not that I've been slightly distracted, and I've not found it on the streaming service uh, service yet, but I have uh opened a bookmark up for the Crow Wicked Prayer starring Tara Reed so that we remember to find that post show and, 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 and watch that at some point. Yes. Oh my god, Alex got us you didn't tell me this. Oh no, you did tell me this bit. So I just, I think Tara Reid just killed me. It's, it's a, a Angel as well, isn't it? From, yeah. Angel. Sorry, David yeah. Bondere. I, I, yeah, I think, I think Tara Reid just distracted me from the idea from from hearing anything else. I'm just going, oh my god, she's fucking awful. We've got to watch it. Um, so, um, what makes your? I was going to say, is, is it me now that I'm I'm coming yes. back from the world of looking up um, bad crow sequels? Um, so my number three, and, and by, by absolute luck more than design, has the number three in its title, and uh, that is Spider-Man 3. Um, I hate this movie, I, and I physically, palpably, when I try to talk about it, feel rage building up e- inside me. Is it emo Spider-Man? Yeah, that will get you. yeah, and 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 I think it's a bad movie outside of that. I mean, I think that's the thing that's always pointed to. Um, and don't get me wrong, it is that bit is awful, and I think that is um, uh, uh, like probably the most egregious singular moment of it. But I don't mind Spider Man, and I don't mind. And I actually think Spider Man Two is better than Spider Man. I do not probably share the love that a lot of the movie audience does for. This is the franchise, but again, much like I said about X Men One and Two, I think it's an important. They're important movies because I think they do tell the world and they find a big enough audience to say superheroes can um, hold up franchises and, and do good things. But because that one and two were fundamentally good, when I heard that um, they were going to be doing the Venom storyline, I thought brilliant. It would be really, really nice to see Venom introduced to a wider audience and introduced in a way like, you know, you said about um, Venom movie, where I have some sympathies with that is it was almost like cold dropped in there. Whereas this is being done in a Spider-Man movie. So you can tell the excellent story that is Venom coming in. Okay, you you skip over the bit where Spider-Man went on a secret war, found a costume in in an alien thing, but... Ultimately, every other story beat you can do, and it is there, and it has been written before, and it has been written brilliantly, and it has been delivered brilliantly, and you have paid for this franchise. You have paid for these stories, and yes, you may want to bring a slight bit of your own tone to it, and then you produce this. And I don't understand, and again, I know there's people that like this. I know there's people in the Renaissance men who who have who've tried to defend this. This is a fucking car crash. It's an absolute car crash of a movie, and not so, not quite as bad as as um, X Men Last Stand for this, because I think it did have its fans. But I think this was again very close and very lucky not to destroy superhero movies for a long time, because yeah. this took what um, this took the premise that we'd seen in one and two and the universe had built, and it flipped on its head in a very bad way, and that emo dancing uh peter parker and being as i say the most egregious moment of that i mean i i watched it in the cinema and i was fuck you fuck you for doing this to to comic book movies because i think this had a large chance of of all those people who'd always said like comic books are for kids it had sucked some of them in with what they did in one and two and they pissed all over that with this movie um and yeah it is it's, it's a bad movie and I think it was very bad for a particularly good storyline that was it been written for you, you fucking dickheads. Just film it. Um, and bad for the comic book movie industry. Is it her predominantly because they also have Sandman, which there's no need for that Sandman storyline. 
I mean, funny enough, I think if they'd have gone for the Sandman story, well, no, tell a lie. If they'd have had the Sandman in it, I think I'd have been happy. The Sandman storyline is horrible as well, isn't it? The the kind of the link into, uh, and again, a, a, a terrible thing that I think bad movies do and bad movie franchises do is feel the need to interlink everything at every step. Everything yeah. doesn't need to be interconnected. Um but but yeah, I've just uh, I I I I'm, I'm going to shout about it because I, mean, I can feel myself getting angry even thinking about <laughs> it, and I don't want to be angry. But I I I hate this movie, and it's only it surprises me that two made it above it, but somehow two movies have made it above this. <laughs> so next we have some honourable mentions from a listener, uh, Chris, who is my better half's work colleague so his honorable mentions judge dread amazing spider-man 2 steel electra catwoman 300 2 sim city oh, i forgot 2. 300 2 existed i've seen that as well shit yeah. and sim city 2 that shit yep yeah. howard the duck hulk the 2003 version i i dispute howard the duck howard the duck is in I... that it's so bad it's good yeah yeah, Level. same here, same here. It's not a good movie, but I, I do, I have a lot of love for it. I really do. I have yeah. a lot of affection. But his top five Netflix is Death Note, um... four, Dark World, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Justice League, and X Men Dark Phoenix. So. Uh, not to not to overly like go into this one when we haven't the others, but I'm uh, quite an interest in this because I think um, some stuff that maybe we that, that I don't think is going to appear on our top fives. Um, but um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, um, that was one I considered um, because I think the comic book of it is amazing, and the movie is not amazing. But again, it kind of it, it got out on two criteria for me. At certain points, it's so bad it's good. And also, I yeah. think there's been such... We know so much about why it's bad. And that was pretty yeah. much that Sean Connery went, fuck off. I'm not doing this, and I'm not doing that, and I'm not doing this, and I'm not doing that. I mean, I, I believe yeah. I, I believe I am right here. This is the movie where the director actually threatened to kill Sean Connery. That's how yes. bad it was on set. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah I, give it, I give it some outs on that. Um, uh what was the other ones on there? There was one that particularly stood out for me, which uh... Uh, was it Death Note? Yeah, no, now... that was the one that your face went up on when I said Death Note. <laughs> it's hard because the, the 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 director of Death Note is 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 brilliant. Death Note is um my favorite anime of all time, and I haven't watched a lot of anime, but I, I will struggle to think that anything will ever beat Death Note. I love Death Note, and I love the manga of it as well. And <clears throat> I think it's a, I think it's weaker than the anime was, and it's weaker than the manga was. Um, and I know it draws a lot of heat and a lot of hatred, but I think the problem was is that it's too long a story to make into a movie, and yeah. I think they actually tried their best. But yeah, I do. I do kind of hold with it a bit of going. Yeah, I can see why people don't like it, but I, I just don't think it's. And again, you can say, well, maybe you just shouldn't do it, but I just don't think it's possible to make into a movie. And yeah. that's probably its fault more than anything else. Yeah, some things are best as a series and yeah, the film. Um, also, the other ones on there: Justice League and uh, X Men: Dark Phoenix. I mean, X Men: Dark Phoenix is, is, is horrible, and much like I said about X Men Three: The Last Stand, how can you fuck up the Phoenix story? And then they did it again. Yes. But I kind of didn't want both on there. I do think X Men: The Last Stand is the worst of the two, and also, I think the truth of it is, is by the time they were making Dark Phoenix, they knew that they weren't going to be making X Men movies any longer. So yeah. really, they phoned it in and went, fuck, we just need to get this last one out the door and just do it, um, which doesn't give it a, an out. They still should have made an effort. But but yeah, I, I I do. I dislike Last Stand more than I dislike Dark Phoenix. They're both bad. They're both bad. <laughs> yeah, they're both bad. And then, you know, we said about like one of the things that makes this list hard is other than like, like a couple of little bits where we've gone, it's, it's maybe it's so bad, it's good. Like there's been a lot of movies mentioned so far, and these are all really bad movies. 
like the, the, the stuff that's on these lists. So that's why this was quite hard to do because there are some absolute rotters out there. Yes, my number two can be summed up. In we should have made. Word. We should have made. We should have made our number twos the number one, shouldn't we? To signify this is a, <laughs> such a bad film, we've given it a number two. The one word that sums up this film, Morpha. See, I'm okay. Go, you go. I'm going to shout. Three for the fucking hours of dull bollocks where they hate each other it's all right we've got the same mum name oh ain't that wonderful fuck off oh it it drags it's boring and means fuck all because you get to the end of it and yeah well we but our mom's had the same name oh isn't that wonderful I, you like um, this, don't you? No, I, no, I don't. I don't. I want it on record. I do not like this movie. I do not like this movie. Um, I don't. I don't dislike it as much as I know a lot of other people do. And um, uh, this is going to say more about the DC universe movies that, uh, than than uh, my like or dislike of this movie. I, I think this is the, the second best movie they've made behind Wonder Woman. I haven't seen The Suicide Squad yet, I will say that. But that's how I think Justice League is worse than this. And I think uh, well, I Superman Man is. Justice League because um, I can't yeah. commit four hours to but, but I gouging think, my I, own eyes out. I, I dislike Man of Steel more than I dislike this one. Um, but yeah, it is. I, I do think it's crap. I, I want that on record. I do think it's crap. I, I just. Yeah, I think, I think there are worse DC Universe movies than this. Um, I don't even hate the Martha bit. Um, I hate so many other parts of this movie more than I hate the Martha bit. And I know that's the bit that is always kind of drawn on. And I can see why, but I think it's just clunky movie making. I think ultimately it doesn't really matter that their mums were the same name. I think the idea was just done quite badly is that they find a connective issue of going, you are not a totally detached alien you have a connection with a human being like i did and, and things like that but but yeah done done very snider clunky thing but yeah no way am i saying it shouldn't be on uh work this is a fucking terrible movie um it is absolutely bollocks but i just yeah. it wouldn't have come close to mine because i think there i think there are actually five or six worse dc movies that were released in and around it than this um but but yeah, they're they're all they're all terrible apart from Wonder Woman, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think mean, it's the fact that I actually went to the cinema and to see this and paid to have the premium super seats and paid like twenty quid. I guess at least they the were privilege. comfortable. At least you were comfortable when <laughs> watching shit. So yeah, no. Even yeah, even I... even comfortable comfortable seats do not help this in any way, shape, or form. No, in fact, if anything, maybe the answer should be the other way and maybe it should be uncomfortable seats. Maybe it should be like uh, taking penance whilst <laughs> watching this. Maybe that would have made it more <clears throat> pleasure and pain there. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah ter terrible movie. I, I just, yeah, I, I, say I can't divorce myself from um, uh, that, that the others are as bad, if not worse. Um, and I quite like the bat armour. If there's one good thing I'm going to say about it, I quite liked... Oh, actually, maybe this would go against it. Because I quite like the kind of Dark Knight, Frank Miller, Bat Armor esque sort of uh, leaning towards that. But then maybe I should hate it for that, for taking something off of something great and uh, and, and mixing it into this. How how they didn't realise at this point that, that that the DC movie universe was terrible, I don't know. However, yeah. very recently, um, I, I started to watch some. Um, uh, some some YouTube videos. Who'd watch YouTube videos, eh? About um, people's love of it. You know, like there's still a groundswell of bring back the Snyder universe, and I, I don't know who these people are, but we need to help these people. There, there are people that quite like to have their balls kicked and be shit yeah. on. Yeah, we need yeah, to, so, we so... need to we need to find these people and be nice to them and give them something good to watch because. I, I, I fear for them and their sanity. Yes. So what makes your 
number two. And when it's our first repeat of the list, um, it is, I think it was your four, I want to say. God, it was so long ago. Um, <laughs> uh, Fantastic Four, uh, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Um, uh, I don't think I hate, I don't think it creates the visceral hatred that Spider-Man 3 does. Um, because I think at least this has... This is terrible. I mean, this is the acting in it is appalling. The scripting is appalling. For the most part, the effects are appalling. Um, but but the worst part of it for me is exactly what you said earlier, is what they do with the Galactus and the Silver Surfer story. Now, again, widely recognised as uh, one of the greatest stories told in comic books, certainly for the age that it was told, so many years ahead of its curve and probably pushed comic book writing forward. It was right there for you fuckos. All you had to do was put it on the movie. You had to, to switch the cameras on and tell these people, say these words. Yep. And they tried to change it. And everything they did changed it for, for the worse. And uh, one of the things that really kind of stood out for me is... Uh, so that that's enough to get it into second place for me. But then you add into it that the other major plot line they have running is the marriage, the impending marriage of, of, of Sue and Reed. And they're dealing with Earth catastrophic elements. They know that something really bad's coming and the world might end. And, you know, I said we're coming back to Jessica Alba. She spends 90% of the movie worrying about her fucking wedding, getting off the <laughs> ground or not. And it just, it just makes, it makes the heroes horrible. Because they're as concerned about that as they are the world ending. But why this gets into number two is, and this is no defense of Jessica Alba as an actress or not, but this felt like um, I, I, there's an honorable mention I forgot, and I'll, I'll get to it now. This felt like for me, and my other honorable mention is Iron Man, um, is this is boys writing boys' comic book stories. And this isn't a good look. And I'm not saying you can't write stories just for men and you can't write stories just for women. Of course you can. But I don't think at the detriment of women or men, whichever other side of the yeah. audience is. And this felt like, yeah, <clears throat> this felt like a, a me when I was 14 and didn't understand that there were differences between boys and girls writing a story where I go, well, all girls, they're just focused on getting married, aren't they? And when the world's ending, they'll just worry about their wedding and whether they'll look pretty on the day. And this was released as a motion picture. This was released <laughs> into cinemas with characters that I love, characters that I really do love. Um, but someone actually greenlit this and went, yes, this is good. But yeah, a, an absolute fucking abomination. Now, I said earlier, the one after it, probably mechanically worse. The one before it, equally as shit in acting and quality and writing. But this destroys an amazing story could have killed movies just lucky that marvel cinematic universe had started to get going at this point um yeah. and just i think offensive in actually the material that's inside it but yeah number two fuck you get in the bin rise of the silver surfer so our almighty leader the the almighty egg has sent us I've, his presence and brought us a list i've found I, Oh, you've got it. I've got it up yes. here if, if you didn't have it. Um, but So, in fifth place, Spider-Man 4, The Quest for Peace. See, and, and I go, there you go, Lock. I'm on, I'm on, I'm in the egg's mind here. I'm going to be chief of the cult. In fourth, Spider-Man 2, the amazing yeah. Spider-Man 2, Jamie Foxx and his wonderful Electronus. Number three, Supergirl. Do you know what? I might get kicked out of the cult here. I fucking love Supergirl. And I've I, never I, seen I, it. And when I say I love it, don't get me wrong, part of that is it's so bad it's good, but I actually love it as long as I don't equate it to Superman. Like, and I think yeah. that's why mm -hmm. people dislike it, because they, they, you know, they have the Krypton element of the story to it. Um, they add in witches for some inexplicable reason. Don't get me wrong, there's some really ropey storytelling in it where she just lands on Earth in her Supergirl suit, which she's never had before, and forgets things for no apparent reason, but kind of like it it's kind of fun feels like an, it feels like an old school saturday afternoon when you were a kid kids movie more than anything else yeah x-men last stand two right and all and his number one batman forever 
So he thinks Batman Forever is worse than Batman and Robin. Wow. Yep. We'll tear him a new one on Friday night show for that. Yeah, that that's uh, not 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 fair. So another list that we have, and this one's a long one, so I will get my uh, my my trusty reading device ready from my my better half. Uh, and again, Sarah. a long one, but I've read it also. And the, the reason why she's getting a long one is one, she put the bloody effort in. People put some effort in, and we'll read it. But also, it's a cracker. There there are reasonings and explanations behind all of her picks. So in her honourable mentions is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the reason being it's awful and destroyed two careers. Number five, Catwoman. Everything about it offends me. It's just so many levels of shit, it's unwatchable, even with alcohol. I think I think that I think it probably is unwatchable. I think she's spot on there. Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Both films are shit, but what they did to the Silver Surfer is unforgivable. Batman and Robin. Nipples. This is all. <laughs> Electra. So bad that she never actually made it all the way through it. It doesn't After get better. Attempts. So just, <laughs> to let you know, just to let you know, it doesn't get better, so you're all good. You don't have to go back and watch it. It's fine. You, you've got what you needed out of it already. But the most egregious films to her are X-Men, Last Stand, Slash Dark, Dark Phoenix. So, I will I will go verbatim of, of what she is putting it. Okay, so X Men Two set up the Dark Phoenix for X Men Three. Admittedly, not the same as the comic, but still the setup. I could almost overlook the shit dialogue, Storm from X Men One, the terrible custom characterization, Rogue. But then Singer jumped ship to make Sp uh, Superman Returns. Not even going into that. And Last Stand is an absolute mess. Yeah, it shits all over the comics. Yeah, and just doesn't know what it is to do with itself. Having grown up loving X Men, it was just devastating to see. I thought X Men may have been rescued by First Class, which showed promise. Not perfect, but showed promise. And Matthew Vaughan had accomplished as a director, and had at least two other films planned before Brian Shit Show Singer. Had to come back. Yep. Vaughn was dumped. We got another two singer films where he tried to basically forget the shit show that he had, had happened, which led to Dark Phoenix and to quote Ian Malcolm, that's one big pile of shit. X Men Last Stand ruined X Men and I cannot rant anymore. I, I, I mean, I, uh, a hundred. A million percent agree with the the thoughts and feelings on, on, on both of them and I, I think she puts it exceptionally well the the only thing that i uh that want to clarify there if we need any other reason to hate these and probably much like i did in my last episode where i tried to win an argument by using nazis um let's also not forget during this period of time brian singer total cunt and the diddler as well so <laughs> Not only ruined the movies, but was doing it while being an offensively horrific sexual predator as well. Yeah, so double whammy of cunt. Yep, yep, yep. He, he really, really does take the biscuit for that, doesn't he? Uh, what a prick. What a shame as well, because The Usual Suspects is uh, an amazing movie, but uh, yeah, should, should should be locked up in a, you know, I, I will I will allow him to latch onto Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey as they circle towards the... the uh, the, the bottom pit of hell. The realms of hell. Yeah. And what can join that is my number one film. Your number one film. I'm really, I'm, I'm surprised. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, what is your number one isn't what I thought was going to be your number one because you've already done what I thought was going to be your number one. So I, I'm very intrigued by this. 2016's Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, I forgot how much you hate this movie. I forgot this. This film is utter garbage. What? This you, don't, is... you, don't, you don't like seeing Will Smith walk up and down streets in slow motion alongside Margot I, Robbie? I never want to see Will Smith walking up and down a street ever again. Margot Robbie can go kill herself for how shit she is in all of her portrayals of Harley Quinn. 
And you know why what? there I has to be rain every fucking time there's a scene I, with her. I don't want no apparent reason. I don't want to defend this movie at all because I know I, I do know why you. Ha- I, I don't think you're right. I think it's fucking terrible. I just want to quickly say on the Margot Robbie front is, I I honestly think she could have done a really good Harley Quinn if the fucking shitty writers and directors she had writing and directing it didn't just portray it and, and misunderstand the character so badly. And yes, the fucking rain. And that's why I think I hate Birds of Prey more because they actually ha- they, they sell sprinklers inside of a prison when there's no fire just so that she gets wet in the scene and stuff like that. But, but yeah, I just... I, I think I, I feel like Margot Robbie had a good Harley Quinn in there somewhere. Just, just these people were it, never going to get it out of her. It's never been seen. No, no. And you've you've then got the awful abomination. And my main reason why I fucking hate this film. I hadn't even considered this. And now that you've started saying that sentence, I know exactly where you're going to go. And I, now I can see why you hate it so much. Yeah. The cunt who believes himself some form of cult leader, Jared fucking Leto. Letoka. <laughs> he. Fuck it, this version of fucking Joker. Fuck me. Never have we ever had Joker with shit tons of tattoos going. Because, <laughs> you know, you can't just do that. Looking like an absolute dickhead. And if I ever see anyone say, oh, I want a relationship like Harley and Joker because of this fucking film. Needs their heads fucking examined. Harley and Joker is an abusive relationship where a man has physically broken the mental state of a woman, given her long-term Stockholm Syndrome... And abuses his power and his will against her on a daily basis. It's heartbreaking as a human being in this world when you see pictures of people cosplaying as the two of them. And you go, oh, you just don't fucking get it, do you? You just don't get it. Like, what's what's happened to you? Like, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. It is, it is horrific, yes. And that's before we go on about how awful he is as a Joker and just... If if we could just make this disappear from existence and wipe everyone's minds that has ever seen it, you know, Men in Black style, the world you know, you would be a better place. You know, you said about like how he looks. Um, I I I would be partially, or I would have been partially up for like a Batman project or something like that, where this was someone's take on the Joker. Because it, it's dramatically different, isn't it? Like, kind of, pretty much the only thing it has in common is green hair and white face. Um, and, and you kind of go, okay, if you were going to really lean into doing something amazingly and dramatically different, it might work. It, I'm not saying it would, it might. Um, I don't get it in this movie. Like, And it, it's almost like they had so little confidence in what they were making. It. They went, oh, we better stick a fucking Joker in. And then they did this one. And I think... It's even worse because of doing this rendition in this movie. Whereas I think if you had a strong Batman or a particular universe that you'd built up where you went, everything's a little bit wonky, kind of an Elseworlds thing, I could buy, I could maybe buy into it a bit. But but yeah, like they almost go, no, this is the this is kind of the universe you think it is, and this is Joker, and you go, well, it's fucking not, is it? Like, and it's it's not done very well, but. Um, and then they because yeah. obviously we get we get Batfleck in for a few moments yeah. in it to just to make sure that we all know that this is canon and this is the Bat universe of the time. Fuck you, get in the bin. I never want to see it again. It's hugely boring as well. I want that on record. You know, we yeah. said this on a couple of other ones. Like the, the movie is, is oh, it's uh, dull as fuck. Yeah, and, and and you know, like it is pretty much just um, a series of um, 
walking scenes and explosions and as you say rain over and over again and um uh, probably sort of again testament to the dc cinematic universe for me of going that they put this in the hands of some really bad creators and i think snyder being the worst because i think snyder set the tone and i think other people were hired to kind of keep that snyder tone which is problematic because it, it it's not good um but um this this had a cast you know like we go back to things we said earlier i, I think hopefully it's come across in a lot of what we've picked is these are the big budget movies you know we've not gone and picked on the little ones that were given five quid to go and make their movie and said like try and do one because you know like when you're trying to make superhero stuff it's particularly hard to make it look good at the best of times but these are people who have gone and had enough money to get actors that uh, whether you love them or hate them have certainly appeared in enough other stuff that they should know the fuck what they're doing They've been able to hopefully have enough budget to hire writers and directors and effects and things like that. And I look at something like this and I go, and this is what you come up with. Um, yeah. I mean, weirdly enough, like one of the few things I would go into its credit with is, is that it actually tippy toed into kind of some DCS storylines, you know, like having the Enchantress as uh, one of the major characters stroke major villains, I think, probably quite brave in the idea but executed really badly um so even like the one positive is 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 destroyed almost instantaneously by by a negative but um yeah like will smith like um uh, whether you like will smith or not like um, fuck me that boy's phoning this one isn't he and joel kinnaman like again same thing i'm not a big fan of his anyway but phoning it in robbie as i think at least tries but she's trying on a bad script and bad direction, you know, like, and again, she, it just... It, it, but that is mess. now what we have as what the majority of people think Harley is. Yeah. And it's not, and that's that's where there, there are far too many people in this world that won't ever read the source material, watch yeah. the original animated series where they fucking invented Harley and yep. her character comes to be. And we'll see that as what Harley Quinn is. That fucking Joker-Harley Quinn relationship as kooky couple and think that that's fine. And I'm just... It, it offends me on far too many levels for Ooh. too many things that happen in it. Well, I said to you, like, I- I've got it spiralling down to the depths of hell, embraced with birds of the prey movie. So you- clearly I do hate it. I'm, I'm with you. I'm- I'm no way am I disputing that it. it's not terrible. Um, again, didn't even make my honourable mentions because I think there's worse DC Universe movies, which, again, should tell you how fucking bad the DC Universe movies are. Um, but, but, yeah, I, I certainly do not dispute any of the points you're making and why you hate it so much. And, yes, I do think much in the same way as um, I said about like the, 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 the depiction of Sue Storm in, in, in Rise of the Silver Surfer. I think, yes, you have damaging portrayals of characters. Uh, we've talked about it on previous shows about how um, there's a difference between creating someone as an anti-hero and showing the villains in a such a light that people would start to hero worship them when that's not actually fundamentally what their story is. Um, yeah, a very dangerous piece of creativity. I, I, I think maybe the only thing that I give them an out on is I think they're so fucking bad at making movies that they didn't even realise that's what they were doing. Yeah. Though at least the redo Suicide Squad is watchable. I, I will get round to that. You know, I, I kind of... Um, I mean, for me, I think at this stage, um, like, I, I think you... A lot of the ones that I have picked, I've talked about how I think they were so bad and potentially could have been the death knell of superhero movies and they were potentially damaging to it as a as an art form, as a craft or whatever. Um, but having said all that, for me, I think they need to burn, destroy the DC universe and start again. But I mean, I see there's future movies coming out that are based with some of those characters. I'm sure they'll tweak it. But I don't think they have learned their lessons yet. But it, uh, yeah, I think... This is a group of movies needs, you know, chuck them all in the fire and start again, I think. They do need to be cleansed with fire. Obviously, 
my reason of hating it is on, on different levels, but my personal vitriol of Leto and his portrayal of Joker and also Matt Robbie and her portrayal of Harley. So, yeah. I mean, that that's why it gets more of a kicking for me than just... It sounds like your hate levels for it are like kind of that hate levels I had for Spider-Man 3, that kind of pure visceral anger when you even have to yeah. consider that it exists. It's one of those of... I actually... I watched it when I'm pretty sure it wasn't that bad. It couldn't have been that bad. Was it really that bad that I had to watch it twice to just prove that it was that bad? And then... Oh. There's something in I've that, though, isn't there? The DVD. Sometimes, like you, you end up unfortunately watching a bad movie more than you've watched a good movie purely because you can't believe quite what you've seen. Um, but yeah, in this case, yeah, yeah it's shit. It, it it's had its two watches just to confirm the shitless, and it will never be seen again. And everyone else, don't ever watch it. Never. And ne- and not, even, not even out of co- like crazy curiosity. Of, can't be that yes yes it is well you know like as we say in all of our episodes you know it'll be really interesting to sort of see in the comments what people um what their top fives are maybe like where they think like maybe one of the movies we've picked is is let's say good or or they like it or whatever but um but yeah i'll 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 be i'll be shocked and again i'll probably be sending some some degree of medical help to anyone who tries to defend that movie as a good movie um or or try and make me change my mind on it I like the idea of uh, picking that as a group watching the Renaissance Men coming up soon just to make you have to watch it a third time. I hate you. Yeah. So, I wouldn't do that to you, baby. What is your number one? So, so my number one is what I thought was going to be your number one, but I knew it wasn't because it had already made your list. My number one is Batman and Robin. Um, I think this is... If you were going to make a perfect movie of a bad comic book movie, I think they made it with this. Um, I think it does everything wrong. Um, as you said earlier, nipples, like adding those ridiculous things onto the suits. Um, Clooney is terrible in this. O'Donnell is terrible in this. Silverstone is terrible in this. Thurman is terrible in this. I don't share any of the Arnie stuff. Arnie is fucking terrible in this. And but to be honest, I think it's about the extent that Arnie has in his acting arsenal, but he's fucking terrible in this. This looks garish. This looks horrible. The the neon design of everything. The 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 really tight enclosed sets for everything. Yeah. Like you've spent all this money, but everyone feels like they're in a room no bigger than the room I'm in now. Um the, the, the plot is ridiculous. Um, and okay, a lot of people say comic book plots can be ridiculous. This doesn't even make sense in and of itself. Um, the the humour in it is is so misplaced. It is not funny. Um, the, the fucking back credit card. And then they do the line of, I'll never leave the house without it and stuff like that. These are really, really bad. Now, as a counterbalance, we have talked how much we love Batman 66. This ain't fucking Batman 66. Like, and anyone who says, oh, you know, like, oh, it's fine. You know, they were trying to go back to that campier one. No, no, they weren't. This was a really bad filmmaker making a really bad film who probably had watched some Batman 66 and thought, oh, you know, we could we could do something a bit different here. But no, this was a vehicle to sell toys and a really bad vehicle to sell toys because kids would not like this and adults would not like this. This undoes everything that whether you love Burton Batman or not Burton actually reinvigorated superhero movies with what he did with, with, with that and they if you wanted to do a movie this way this is a re- reboot you cannot do this in the universe as established and I do not share your love for, for Batman forever and I actually and I didn't jump on the tongue so I know we're doing this I think Tommy Lee Jones and um, Carrie are shit in it and they can, they can fuck off into hell as well in the bin. I think they're terrible. And I think I think Forever is is awful. But this doesn't even feed off of that. This is a movie in a franchise that bears no relation to the rest of the franchise, other than some of the characters have the same name and come back. Um, this could have killed 
you know, I talk about all the others. This is the one that I am still surprised to this day that this didn't kill comic book movies. I am shocked that anyone ever gave anyone a reasonable budget again after this. And it's probably only luck that a load of us watched it because we didn't realise it was going to be as bad as it was that brought any money back to allow superhero movies to continue. But this is the biggest example for me of a, a movie that could have killed. And, you know, like we've said this before, like for a lot of time, comic books were a, what had been my dirty little secret. Yeah. And probably the only chance I ever had of, and not that it matters that it's legitimised, but it being legitimised in other people's eyes who've never read it, was things like TV and movie. And fuck me, this made me embarrassed for a long time. I couldn't have told anyone for a good 10 plus years, probably even longer. As I said earlier, I nearly didn't come back to Nolan's Batman because this had left such a bad taste that I thought I might be go I might be done with Batman movies forever at this point. Yeah. Fucking dumpster fire. <laughs> it is yeah, it, it said it was in my top three. It was in Sarah's. It's in yours. It's yeah. you know, lots of people have brought this one to the to the list. Um, says a lot about it. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, like it was obviously um, a, a, again a, a big budget affair, but it didn't. What it didn't do, I guess, is it didn't do what Silver Surfer did. It didn't do what um, Last Stand did. It didn't do what Spider Man Three did. Is it didn't shit over a comic book story because. Um, they didn't really take it from a comic book story. They just took the no. characters, didn't they? But, um, but, but yeah, I mean, so maybe they get a little bit of an out for not fucking up something I love more than just being really bad <laughs> at it. But, um, yeah, just, just pish, man. Like, um, embarrassing. Uh, that, actually, that's probably the best time I've got for it. This movie is embarrassing. I watched this and I'm embarrassed for everyone who's in it, me watching it, and me liking stuff that it's based off of. That's how damaging this movie was. So, watching it every week, then, yeah? Oh, pretty much, you know, Friday night viewing <laughs> after the show every week. Um, just just very just very quickly before we uh, shift on, um, just thought it was worth sort of mentioning that um, the common, commonly across the, the, the viewer lists, um, a lot of hatred for Catwoman. Like, that really did appear quite a lot. And uh, one that neither you nor I mentioned, and I just thought maybe we could touch on it quickly, because there was a lot of dislike for this in there, was Green Lantern. Um, for, I can't shit on a Green film Lantern. that I've never seen. Oh, we well, do you know what? Like, I'd be interested for you to watch it and, and see. Um, weirdly enough, I don't hate it. Um, that It's a movie that... And I know, like, um, even within his own movies... Uh, Ryan Reynolds likes to shit on it. Um, again, studio interference clearly cost that. And um, I, I give it a bit of an out because I think there is a there was a good movie there. I think maybe the when they first started making it, there was a good movie there and studio interference and budget probably yeah. really impacted it more than anything else. But but yeah, I, I, I feel sorry for Greenland to more than hate it, I guess is the honest truth. Yeah, it's one of those because I've been told by so many people it's shit. I've never seen it, and it's yeah. not on any streaming things, so Probably it's not one of those that you can it, you can easily find. So mm. I'm not going to put my hand in my pocket to watch something. That's no, I mean, like I I I don't no mind. Shit. I don't mind watching bad movies. Sometimes I find it quite fun. But I'm with you. I'm certainly not going to pay good money to watch something that someone's told me shit. That would be <laughs> lunacy. So. Next week, we are going old school. We really are, aren't we? We're going proper, proper old school. We're going back, way back, back into time. With issue 27 of Detective Comics. Issue 1 of, Spy of Superman. And issue 10 of, and I can't remember what it was called. Sensational Comics. Sensational Comics, yes. And seeing the first issues with Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. Thanks to our yeah. hopefully new show sponsor, Amazon, for uh, having these on Prime Reading. But yeah, we saw and them on there, didn't we? And Comicsology, <laughs> yeah. We, we said, do you know what? It'd be really interesting to 
you know, we, we, we said it, I think, on the, the, the TV episode where we said like some things were way before our time and probably haven't aged well. And we said it would be really nice to go back to four freezies um, and go back and see some of these really old stories and, and maybe uh, find whether we love it or whether it's, it's clunky and, and really hard. But, but you know, it'd be an interesting, um, an interesting avenue to go down that we've not tried before, I think. Yeah, so go and see what comics in the thirties look like. And um, uh, speaking, speaking very, sorry, quickly. I know we said it a minute ago about uh, not paying for uh, really shit movies. Um, the Tara Reid vehicle that is Crow Wicked Prayer is available on Amazon for three pound forty nine, um, and uh, also on Apple TV for three pound forty nine. Not available anywhere for free on streaming. So if we want to watch that, we're paying for it. I don't. I- I don't think I can put my hand in my pocket on that one. No. Not, not even three and a half quid. No. But obviously we will be looking at some old school shit. Um, and I said, it will be... I'm intrigued to see yeah. how A, the medium looked in its original form and how it holds up to a first-time read... Yeah, what, and, and the thing is, 80, it'll be a first... 80, 90 years down the line. And it'll be a first time read for both of us, won't I? I mean, like, as much as um, like I'm, I've been a comic book fan for a long time, there is there's, there's scant of the original ones that I've ever really read. And much of that was because of uh, money. I um, yeah. couldn't really afford them. But um, but even on the Marvel side, there's not a... I've kind of read all the early Fantastic Fours and I've read the early Avengers. I do actually have. I've recently got the early Thor and early uh, Spider-Man to um, start reading. But yeah, I really haven't read stuff from back then. So I'm really intrigued to see how I feel about it. And 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 I think one of the interesting sort of vehicles this is going to be is can we equate what we saw, what we see then to what it actually ultimately becomes? Because... You know, from from such beginnings, if we kind of go, well, this is a bit shit. How did this get this far? But yeah, yeah, I can't wait to do it. Yeah, so that will be issue twenty three, back in the way back machine. Um, yeah, I might so, even do a retro backdrop for us for it. Or can you get some graining look for the visuals for the cameras? Uh, probably not, mate. We're we're. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> If we, if we were doing it on any other platform than the one we're on, I'd say yes, but no, on this platform, you get what you're fucking given on the cameras and you like it. Um... Um, so that being said, like, subscribe, ring the bells, do all the, the uh, youtube things. Um, as always, what's your other content on the channel? We have the Friday show, where it's a free-for-all of all the wonderfulness. Said we're this... a lot more negative than we are on this one. Yes. Um, said you have your TEW. I am. Going I'm, up. A, I'm a professional wrestling booker now, except for the professional part of it. But yeah, yeah, I'm saving ECW from it from what actually happened to it in the real world. In the real world. Um, also, the pop videos will they be making a return? They will do. They will do. Um, but strangely enough, and this is the confession point, I actually have about fifteen. That I just that I just need to um, finish and upload, but I kind of hit a bit of a wall with couldn't be asked to finish them and upload them, and I and I kept telling myself next week, but I probably will in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but well, by the time this comes out, that this will give me at least about a month. Um, I probably will crack on because I actually am. And when I turn to the right, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, and I know there's one at the post office. So six mystery boxes that I haven't even unboxed they're still with tape on and i also have uh, to my eternal shame um one of the listeners but also a friend bought me a christmas present that i said i'd do on a pop video that i still haven't unwrapped because i haven't done a pop video yet but but yeah, there will be some pop stuff coming back yeah and obviously we also have Stu um doing his gaming sessions usually on a saturday and, and with, with, with little egg as well wasn't it big egg yes. little egg so with with the, with the little one, and yeah. potentially by the time you hear this, the uh, Jimmy Star Trek. Well, show. If, if if Jimmy ever actually releases uh, reads the release schedule for a TV show and doesn't tell us a month beforehand, he's recording the first episode because Picard's out, and uh, but realizes the show doesn't actually release till a month later. There, uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll have yeah some some Jimmy solo Star Trek content on the channel in the near future. So plenty of things that you can 
enjoy throughout your week. And then obviously come back every Sunday for more of this. Yeah. And you know, if you're going to pick time, one show, just watch this one. Fuck the others. But, you know, yeah. like if you, yeah. But, you know, there's seven days in a week. We only take up, you know, a couple of hours of one of your days. Yeah. So, you know, get on the rest of it for the rest of the week. And until good next time, goodbye. <laughs>